What's up, my people? This is Showbiz the Adult. Come on in. Come on in the water style. Come on in, the water's just fine. Hold on, let me hook this up right there. Oh, mm-hmm, trying to mess up on me. Come on, camera, don't mess up on me. Come on, baby. Let's do the twist. All right. All right, yeah, 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 looking good. Come on in, the water's fine. Who's all, who's all in here right now? Where my people at? Where my people at? Yo, what's up, Zelly? Where my people at? Man, I just don't like the way this is looking. I need to get me a got my double neck. Yo, father, what's going on with you, Playboy? Yeah, yeah, man. This is my last night in New York. Um, so just want to talk to my people. Off kilter. What's going on with you? Yeah, you see how that's rolling? Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do need to. Do I think it was good? Uh, do I think it was good for AJ to duck Deontay Wilder? Um, no. I don't think it was good for uh, AJ to duck Deontay Wilder. Um, it's one of those things, man. Um, to me, AJ versus Deontay Wilder, I keep saying this, man. Is it the big fight at heavyweight to me? What's going on, Regulator? That's not the big fight to me at, at heavyweight. It never was to me. Um... The big fight at heavyweight was always Tyson Fury against Deontay Wilder. I always saw that as the two, and if you look at my videos, I've said it many times. Those are the two most talented heavyweights, and that's the big fight. Forget the marketing. Forget the belts. Forget the titles, especially when you know why um, the environment is what it is right now. You know what I'm saying? We know why... AJ is holding all the belts, and Tyson Fury isn't. That dude was on the coke. He, he was lining them up. It was his fault. But what I'm saying is, um, forget that. Forget the hoopla. Forget the big noise, okay? When it comes to the two best fighters, I always thought at the heavyweight, in the heavyweight division, it was Tyson Fury against Deontay Wilder. That's why it didn't matter to me when AJ and Deontay Wilder fought. It can be Pavekin against Deontay Wilder, Pavekin against AJ. It doesn't really matter. It really doesn't really, it doesn't matter to me. I can see AJ against Ortiz. I can watch, you know, I can watch them all, man. It really, it really didn't matter to me. Okay, yo, father, I, I can hear you on that. But bottom line to me, the two best heavyweights is Tyson Fury against Deontay Wilder. And there's a reason why I'm celebrating um, me saying that. Because I never knew that video existed with Emmanuel Stewart saying that the two most talented heavyweights in the future was going to be Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury. Okay, he said that before he passed away Back in like 2012 or whenever he said it, he said that years ago. He knew that years ago. Yeah, yeah, it was like November, December. Absolutely. I think technically Tyson Fury is the best. Um, AJ against Pavekin. The reason why I pick AJ to win that fight. Let me answer this question. The reason why I pick AJ to beat Pavekin, I have a friend, his name is Micah, okay? He asked me the same question, and this is the best way I can explain it. Have you ever seen a big man get bullied? 
He's getting bullied by the little guy. Eight, what's going on? And the big kid finally gets pissed off and snaps on the little kid and the little kid can't do anything about it. That's what I think AJ is. AJ is a gentle giant. AJ himself tries, he, he said it himself that he tries to box smart and not go for the kill. And, you know, I worked a jab. You know, a jab would take you around the world, a right hand would take you around the block, all that stuff, okay? Um, so th this is what I'm saying. I think when it comes down to it, when it becomes a fight, AJ's body, his athleticism, his athleticism, his power, his coordination as such a big man, when he snaps and starts swinging and trying to fight his way out of it instinctively, it's hard to beat him. If he snaps and starts, so I think Pavekin bothers him, I do, but when a fight breaks out, which it will, when a fight breaks out, AJ has too much ability. What's going on, God? AJ has too much physical abilities to bring to the table. All right? So that's the only reason why I got AJ winning. When the fight breaks out, this is why I think Tyson Fury is such a horrible matchup for everybody in the welterweight division. Because when a fight breaks out, it doesn't matter. You look worse with uh, Tyson Fury. Why? Because he's huge with the reach. He's physical. But technically so sad, it's kind of like if somebody, it's kind of like if Aaron Pryor were to fight James Tony, you know, and start opening up and swinging. That's the worst thing you could do with James Tony. He makes you look like a fool. Eight, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yo, father. I, hey, look, yeah, and I, I want to announce that, too, that I'll be commentating uh, the fight. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and party, get, throw some, knock some back, and, and talk that boxing mess, man. We're going to talk some boxing mess, dog. Definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Jason Day, but you see what I'm saying? You see what it takes? It, it, what we're saying now, in order for Pavekin to strategically beat AJ, he has to throw in an element, okay, that he does. He just doesn't have. I mean, AJ is dirty. AJ's dirty. AJ holds you from the, the top of the head and hits you while he's holding you, okay? So... Dirt for dirt, body for body, jab for jab, whatever. AJ actually got the guy beat. But warrior spirit for warrior spirit, that's what makes things even. AJ doesn't have that dog in him. True IQ, man. It was great, dog. I had a good time, brother. I had a good time, and I met some good people last night. But... But AJ, he just doesn't have the dog in him. But if you bring that dog out and he starts to snap, kind of like Lennox Lewis did Rockman and, and Lennox Rock, he starts to snap. Yo, he's too physical. Malibu, thanks, man. Yeah, AJ's chance the worst. AJ's chance the worst for sure. You know, here's the thing about chance. Here's the thing about chance. I think Bernard Hopkins, Evander Holyfield, Floyd Mayweather, Sugar Ray Robinson, uh, Mike Tyson, Marvin Hagler, I think these guys got some of the best chance ever. Okay, there's many of them that have great chance. But... I mentioned Floyd Mayweather as having a great chin because everybody can get rock, rocked, but Floyd Mayweather, if you're able to get your bearings back quick, I always saw that as a great chin. When Lennox Lewis hit Mike Tyson, he wasn't severely hurt. 
he was hurt for a quick second, but he laid down on the canvas, wiped his nose, and he kind of gave up. That dude had a magnificent chin, okay? Um, and so did Floyd. Floyd, got he's been rocked a few times. Uh, Zab Judah, Chop Chop Corley, twice against Sugar Shane Mosley, like going into the 10th round against Maidana. He's, but the way he can rebound says that he has a great chin. I think AJ, right, right, how quickly Ali got up from that left hook knockdown from Frazier. That's a great chin. I think Mosley could have finished him, but I have many speculations on why he didn't. True. Yeah, I always said Prime Mosley beats Prime Floyd. I, I've, I've said that forever. I, I thought, you know, but that's not who fought. And that's Mosley's fault. You know what I'm saying? Floyd Mayweather was calling out Sugar Shane Mosley. And Sugar Shane Mosley was saying he got a loose tooth and stuff like that. So, you know, Sugar is my guy. My favorite fighter was Roy. Number two was Sugar. That was my guy. But I did see when he... Avoided Floyd Mayweather. And, uh, right, but I'm saying when you do catch Floyd clean, his he's able to. <laughs> yeah, God, remember that? You're like my tooth is kind of loose. I don't know. I'll, I may go to the dentist. It's like, come on, dog. We're talking about fighting Floyd Mayweather next. That's three to four months. You can't. Your tooth gonna be loose for three to four months. You know he was. Come on, man. I brought up who, who, Mike who, Tyson? I brought him up. Right, you're right, Triple H. Um, yeah, Wilder, he, he, he gets, but Emmanuel Stewart said he was one of the most talented heavyweights coming out. And Emmanuel Stewart was right, okay? Um, your boy, Deontay Wilder, he, you can get outboxed all you want, but if you knock out 100% of your opponents, if everybody, Kush, what's going on? If everybody who's ever fought you went to sleep, all that, that doesn't matter. I can never complain about Deontay Wilder. Mm. I can't tell you that yet, Will. I can never complain about Deontay Wilder. On the real, I can never complain about Deontay Wilder. Because at the end of the day, there hasn't been a per. Everybody goes to sleep. So, I can't. Hey, if you're putting everybody to sleep, yep. And you know what? Deontay Wilder, he's 100% at giving people that one. Yeah, he's matured. He's matured. Okay? Lennox Lewis. You can thank Lennox Lewis for the, the first big step. Um, I think it's going to be late. I think this is the thing. I think in order for Deontay Wilder must knock out Tyson Fury, right, in order for him to win because Tyson Fury is a better boxer. But Deontay Wilder has knocked 100% of his opponents out. It's not like he has a puncher's chance. He's knocked out 100% of his opponents. So, there's a very great chance that he had knocked out Tyson Fury. I think it's going to be late. Why? Because Tyson Fury is too good of a boxer. And Tyson Fury is going to be making the fight look easy at first. He's going to be having a ball because Deontay Wilder is not technically sound. And Tyson Fury makes everybody look stupid. Okay? So, he's going to be having a ball. The thing is, Deontay Wilder, he has either either he's either he's so sure of himself that it's insane or he's insane. Whatever it is, you cannot convince that man that he's going to lose. Period. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. AJ to me is 
maybe the fourth best heavyweight. I got uh, Ortiz over AJ. Yeah, AJ, yeah, Tyson Fury's going to be having a ball and then boom. Somewhere in the, I think maybe the, the ninth round or something like that. That's how I'm exfoliating. I think Wilder is the best. No, wait. I actually think Tyson Fury is the best. But Deontay Wilder is going to beat him with a late round KO. So, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury, Ortiz, then AJ. That's what I think. I think if AJ fights Ortiz, he's in he's in a huge amount of trouble. That's what I think. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, dog. I work on it, dog. I work on my Nicki Minaj, man. It got bruises from uh, all the injections. <laughs> hey man <laughs> oh. for sure y'all funny man <laughs> hey no 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 uh-uh. No slander, man. No racist remarks or the sexual. We, we keep it eight more over here. Oh, my God. Man, you guys going to have me laughing, man. Don't. Hey. Hey. Jason's all right. Anywho, um, did anyone see that video with Emmanuel Stewart? I, I really want to talk about that. Because Emmanuel Stewart, you know, God bless him. That man was extremely accurate. He split his hot dogs before you, though. Boy. <laughs> Y'all foolish. <laughs> but did anyone see that uh, Emmanuel Stewart video? No, nah, you got to check that out, God. Check it out. I, you know, when I get back uh, to my studio, I'm, prob I'm probably going to do like an official video and not a live stream, you know, talking about that. Because Emmanuel Stewart, man, he called. If, if you look at that Roy Jones versus Tarver 2 when Roy Jones got knocked out, he called that knockout before it happened. Right before it happened. All right, God, check it out. Check it out. Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel Stewart was calling stuff, man. Think about the fighters he had. He had, uh, what, Tommy Hearns. He had the G-Man. He had Lennox Lewis. He, I mean, the guys that he had all had devastating right hands. And he said that Deontay Wilder trained with him for a little bit. To rank Triple G over Roy Jones. People just, I, I don't... Look, I don't I don't look or listen to that crap, man. That that stuff I don't and plus I hate trying to I hate getting emotional over stuff like that. I watch the fights. I live through them and I know what I've seen. I know what I've seen, man. I know what I've seen. One day some one day they're going to do to rank Triple G over any of those guys is hellacious. It's not close. It's not who's. It's not. It's it's not close at all. It's not close at all. Roy Jones Jr. went ten years without losing a round. Ten years without all three judges agreeing that he lost that round. Ten years. Think of the guys Roy Jones Jr. fought. Roy Jones Jr went from junior middleweight to heavyweight champion of the world. Oh, dude, let's not. 
And talent-wise, you ain't seen anything like Roy Jones Jr. since Sugar Ray Robinson. Man, Roy Jones Jr. was all by himself as far as his abilities, athleticism. They were calling him Superman. People, that's the thing. People got short memories. There was a time when they were calling him Superman. Then you couldn't even fathom anyone coming close to beating that guy. Not close. Triple G's good. He aight. Yeah, yeah. But here's the thing. Triple G got robbed twice. Roy Jones Jr. wouldn't get touched by Canelo. The fact that you can rob Triple G, if you think Triple G was robbed by Canelo, the fact that you can rob Triple G because the Canelo fight was so close and Canelo isn't even a natural middleweight lets you know where Triple G's at. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Marvin Hagler will blow Canelo's grills. Roy Jones Jr. will blow Canelo's grills, dog. He aight. Yeah, the fact that the fight is close. Canelo ain't a natural middleweight and walked him down. The fact that it's even close. Dude, Roy Jones Jr. would be looking around. Dog, Roy Jones Jr. would be looking around doing this. Bam, be hitting him moving. Man, dog, come on, dog. Come on, he'd be moving his neck around. And knock him out, dog. Stop. 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 Dude, Roy Jones Jr., Roy Jones Jr. would have jumped in. He would have jumped in from half the ring. Don't forget the athlete Roy Jones was. He would jump in from half the ring. He would hit Canelo with a body shot. Pop! And from then on, Canelo would be afraid to punch. Every time. Did you see, did you see Amir Khan uh, being too fast for Canelo? What do you think Roy Speed would do? On top of punching harder than everybody Canelo ever fought. The dude had devastating powers and power in both hands. People forget the power he had. Come on, man. He'll be turning Canelo's head, one shot him. It won't even be close. God, thank you. you. So you saw it, God, didn't you? Did you see it? Did you see it? I swear to God, IRA, I swear to God. There you go. And that dude said the two best um, is Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder. Yo, he knew it. He saw what I saw. He saw what I saw, man. He saw what I, that's why, I, that's why, yeah, in 2012, God, that's why, that's why when Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder chose to fight each other with no issues, they just jumped and fought each other, that's when I knew real recognized real. And they both are just beasts. When they just chose to fight each other and skip the whole AJ thing, I, I was like, people don't know, but the best heavyweight fight was just made. The best heavyweight fight was just, yeah, AJ was built up. The whole AJ and Deontay Wilder fight was built up. It was promoted well and, and, you know, all that hoopla. But the hype isn't facts. It isn't facts. It isn't facts. Dude, how much money did Floyd Mayweather against Conor McGregor make? How good was that fight? How much hype was between Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao? How good was that fight? I can let you, I can mention at least five fights I saw on damn ESPN that was better than those fights. I'm talking about the quality of the fight. Deontay Wilder against Tyson Fury is the best heavyweight fight there is. I am young Robert Thompson. <laughs> I'm the meteor man, dog. Well, these Tic Tacs, boy, my breath, my breath smells amazing. When you're eating Tic Tacs because you're hungry, because you call room service, and room service isn't, re matter of fact, don't be looking at my butt, dog. Jason?
Uh, yeah, I don't have a, a, a menu in my room for room service. Can someone? Okay, well, how about this? Do you guys have uh, steaks? Oh, okay. I got you. All right. Yep. Stuff like that. That's why that boy Q, this New York trip, yeah, man. Yeah, dog. Y'all, you feel me? So I'm eating this. I'm eating this. I got to actually call the, the lobby and have them do some stuff. But don't worry about it. <laughs> you funny, dog. <laughs> How the women look out, boy. You know what though? You guys want to give me a trouble? <laughs> I almost had a full. <laughs> let's change. Let's change the the subject. <laughs> let's change the subject, dog. Cute, no, cute, cute. Next time, man. Next time. All right? We're going we gonna to talk about this offline. We're going to talk about this right here. Get yeah, off kilter. You're messing with me, dog. Oh, shoot. Hey. I swear to God. But, like I said, I've seen, when it comes to quality of fights, Deontay Wilder against Tyson Fury is the best fight. That's what I'm saying, yo, father. You remember? Man, let wifey. Yeah, y'all, hey, y'all keep this on the hush. Wifey, I'm out here doing good. I'm doing the right thing. All right? You know I got a soft chin. You know I got a glass chin. There's nobody in this room. All right? I don't need any left hooks from you. When I get back home. Alright. Huh? What was that? No, I ain't, it, 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 I'm all good. Yeah, man. I swear to God. Go have me out there catching a the seizure. <laughs> I'm gonna get <laughs> I'm gonna get hit so hard by my by the wifey dog. I'm gonna be out there bad, dog. <laughs> Like what happened to showbiz? Gotta be live for you. Oh my god. <laughs> Y'all some fools, man. Y'all some fools. Yeah, man, Tyson Fury. What am I get? I got into it already. My birthday was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> that was my guy, Springer. <laughs> Screaming, dropping is a robbery. <laughs> I can't believe y'all still remember that. But, um, yeah. And I've been watching Tyson Fury. I've been, oh, well, well, forget that. Forget that. Um, AJ. I've been looking at AJ, man. AJ's always in shape, but he's in some serious serious shape. AJ doesn't like um this whole stealing of the thunder with Tyson Fury coming back. Q. Already? I swear to God, God, there you go. You don't know until you sleep. Man. Go ahead, Q. Go ahead, Q. I'm sure they're thirsty to know. They're thirsty to know. 
Go ahead. I'm about to give me another Tic Tac because of this here. Because this here. You never been put to sleep? God bless you. But, man, AJ is looking, he looking like in great shape. So he knows he has to be Pavekin in some great fashion. You looking forward to what fight? Q. AJ against Pavekin. Sophie. Stop it. Hey, 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 uh, oh, the Crawford fight. Against who? Yeah. From my understanding, from what I'm hearing, from what I'm hearing, uh, that fight between Bud and Errol Spence is getting pushed. He'll be in a fight stream. Well, he won't be visual. He's sure going to show up. Man, look. You got Spence beating Terrence Crawford in eight? Bro. I'm going to say this. I'll say this right now. I think I've said it before. But if Errol Spence blow out any of those guys, Porter, Danny Garcia, Keith Thurman, especially Bud Crawford. Nobody can mess with him. If he blow out any of those guys, nobody can mess with him. That's what I'm saying. If Spence beat Terrence Crawford in eight, he might as well go up to 154 right now. That means nobody can mess with him. Because all these guys are so close. If Errol Spence beat any of those guys by a margin like that, I feel you, God. If Spence knocks out, Spence won't knock out Terrence Crawford. He won't knock out Terrence Crawford. He'll probably drop him. He'll probably drop him. I can't see him knocking him out. I don't see that. I see it as a close fight. That's what I see. I see it as a close fight. But it's not just Terrence Crawford put on a boxing clinic either. It's his punching power too. That boy can crack. I swear it. That's what I'm saying, man. I'll, the two fights that are very hard for me to call is Tyson Fury against Deontay Wilder and Errol Spence against Crawford. That's hard. I don't see Bud taking him in deep waters and drowning him either. I see an extremely close fight. And it's up to the judges what you prefer. Unless somebody gets knocked down. You got Fury winning and you got Spence winning. I feel you saying, BK. But the thing is that I know that eight. He only, he's He's only, thanks, Stringer, he's only fought one way, right? Okay? He's only fought one way. So did Bernard Hopkins. So did James Toney. How easy were they to beat? So was Marvin Hagler. Mike Tyson fought one way. Ali fought one way. Did Ali, Ali fought one way until he got old? Right. It's, Bruce Lee fought one way. Okay? It's, it's knowing what you bring to the table and being a master of it. Style make fights. Yeah. It's being a master of what you do. If you are a beast at wrestling, wrestle. Okay, he adapted, but he was the, uh, the great striker, right? He fought one way. Thank you, God. So, Errol Spence has mastered his abilities and what he sees as a way to break down and beat his opponents. That's what he does. 
and it's smart because you can't see too many people beating them. Dang. Dang. Um, Deontay Wilder hasn't captured my imagination the way Ty Mike Tyson did. I I'm I'm gonna keep it real. So if if my if Deontay Wilder loses, I won't take it. Man, you know what it is. You're right, Ricky. Fart chick. <laughs> you you know <laughs> that chicken was fire too. Um, you know what it is. What it is is my hero was Roy Jones. Once Roy Jones got knocked out, nobody surprised me anymore. I feel you with I feel you on that FP. My whole thing is, does it really matter? This is what I'm saying. This is what I'm saying, dog. We need we need boxing needs to get off of the working our way up to the mega fight. Because after the mega fight, then what is it? Right? So fight the best opponent that's available. If it end up being a great fight, fight them again. Fight them again. Look, Leonard versus Duran was probably the best fight that could be made at the time. He lost, he fought him again. Hagler and Leonard, there's always a new great fight. Just fight the best available opponent. That's right. Yeah, I remember best of the best. True IQ, right. You're being funny, and that is funny, but it's true. And then the final fight, Pacquiao was humping the canvas. Eighties middleweights greater than seventies heavyweights. All right. So, basically, you're saying middleweights, not welterweight. Oh, middleweight. That's tough because there weren't two. Hagler was a middleweight. Hearns and Sugar didn't become a middleweight until the eighties. Oh wait, eighties middleweights against seventies heavyweights. Right, that's what you said. All right, so, ooh, that is a good one. That's a good one. So you have Muhammad Ali, you have Ken Norton, you have George Foreman, you have Joe Frazier, uh, you have Kawi, you have Bonavina. You have the tail end of Sonny Liston. Um, who, 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 who that? Oh, you have Ernie Shavers. You have, well, Larry Holmes is more 80s. You have Spinks. No, no, no. He's saying the class, the, the middleweights in the 80s is a higher quality group than the heavyweights in the 70s. And what I did was I named some guys that made me think I'm not sure how true that is. You know what I'm saying? So in the 80s, the middleweights were Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, um, the Beast Mugabe, Hagler. But you also had in the late 80s, Terry North, Mike McCullum, um, Julian the Hawk Jackson, um, Monzone, um, Duran. Damn.
Yeah, 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 yeah. Julian the Hulk Jackson may have been the hardest puncher of all time, pound for pound. Who was the best middleweight in my opinion? Um, that's a hard question because that's a hard question because you're asking me. Okay, if you if you if, man, that's that you know that's a hard question because physically, right? See, right? That's what I'm saying. Physically, talent wise, I would say either Roy Jones or Sugar Ray Robinson. But what they did in the middleweight division, Sugar Ray Robinson's still there. But then you have to say Monzon, Marvin Hagler, um, Bernard Hopkins. When you say what they've achieved in the middleweight division. If you say, if you say, what, if they all fought each other at middleweight, I say, if they all fought each other, yeah, there was a time when James Tony was a middleweight. If they all fought each other at middleweight, I give it to Sugar Ray Robinson. Dude, Sugar Ray Robinson in fight night, this is the type of stuff we don't want in hard knock nights. Sugar Ray Robinson was like cheating. Once somebody picked Sugar Ray Robinson, then you had no choice but to pick, uh, what's that dude? Yeah, Q. What's that dude? You know the dude, the fake dude on Fight Night. What's his name? Starts with an A. Uh, you had to pick him because Sugar Ray Robinson was that. Yeah, dog. Sugar Ray Robinson was just, yeah, Andre Bishop. Sugar Ray Robinson was just that stacked, you know, you know, stuff like that. You, you got to be careful when you make these boxing games. You got to be careful with what you're doing. Yeah, IRA, you, you got to be careful with what you're doing. I didn't do it. I'm such a boxing fan. When somebody grabbed Sugar Ray Robinson, I grabbed Bernard Hopkins, and I had a ball. We're trying to make them miss because they always try to do sidestep uppercuts. And, but that, that made for a very frustrating fight. Yeah, so, I mean, because it, Clark, what's going on with you? We're kind of, right now, we're talking about, yeah, so, Sugar Ray, okay, let, let's say you have Sugar Ray Robinson, right, in a, in a boxing game. You want Sugar Ray Robinson to genuinely have everything that Sugar Ray Robinson had, but you don't want it to be where if he gets put in the, person's hands who don't need, know how to play the game, he still has a great chance of beating you. You don't want that. Yeah, dog. That dude thought he had diabetes, dog. Jake LaMotta. How many times that fool fight him, dog? Didn't they say Jake LaMotta fought that guy? I think they said something like twice in six weeks. It was something crazy. Three times in six weeks? It was dumb, man. Jack, what's going on? He, yeah, it was six fights, but I'm talking about there was like a small, it, like he fought him in a small window one time. Like, I think the Valentine Day Massacre was the second fight he had with him, like in six weeks. It, I mean, it was crazy. Yeah, dude. I think Wilder and Fury is late November, December, something like that. Yeah, if you fight somebody that many times with that short of a turnaround, you're going to have a, if you can't beat them, dog, you know, you got to beat them sometime. All right, then, eight, I get at you, man. Don't forget, man, show up to my commentary with, uh, you know, AJ and Pavekin, man. I get at you. I get at you then. It's December 1st. Right, there's no date. Yeah, me too. I was nice with Chavez on fight night. No, nah, Danny Garcia isn't done. Jason, listen. Listen, Jason. Why would he be done? Because he had two losses? 
How many losses did Sugar Ray Leonard have? You know what I'm saying? How many losses did Marvin Hagler have? Yeah, man. Who did and who did he lose to? Danny Garcia lost to Keith Thurman in a split decision. He lost to Sean Porter in a razor thin fight. Dude, that's not you're washed up. If Danny Garcia fights Sean Porter again, he more than likely will win. You know what I'm saying? Speaking of win streaks, that. <laughs> Thanks, Pete. <laughs> Thanks, Pete, man. Tell your son I said salute. Um, you you need to train him. I feel you. I feel you, dog. I feel you, dog. Um. Uh, dang, what was I going to say about, uh, oh, I just missed my train of thought. See, messing with you guys, man. You got me, you got my brain farting. Messing with y'all. I done forgot what I was going to say. There you go, BK. That's a great point. That's a great point. Mickey Ward against Gotti. Okay? It's not, I keep telling people, yo. Yo, let's, let's. I keep telling people, it is not your record, it's your performance. It's not your record, it's your performance. And we got to make sure that casual fans understand that. Because the way social media is now, and the way people are so phony, fake, and temporary now, okay, that if someone says, oh, he lost, well, he ain't that good. Stop looking at social media. Stop looking at advertising and marketing. Just watch the fight. Watch the fight. It's the performance. Win, lose, or draw. You want to see them again. Well, my Holyfield is my personal favorite heavyweight of all time because I wasn't alive to see Ali. So, Holy, but to me, Holyfield versus Riddick Bowe won when he lost is my favorite fight. It's my favorite fight, and he lost it. That's my favorite Holyfield fight. That was amazing. Yeah, King. Yeah, it's not, it's, I just left. If you guys. Right. If, if, if you, if you guys, when you guys saw my commentary with Canelo, as soon as they said, can be, as soon as the final bell rang, I said it's over, and they both won, because I saw a great fight. At the end of the day, people want to leave a a fight or turn the channel from a fight and say, "Man, that was a great fight. I want to see that again." Forget the record. Forget the record, Augustus was great to watch every time you watched that fool. That dude had as many losses as he had wins. Dude, a fantastic loss is better than a boring win any day. Probably got. That's that Mayweather effect, Clark. I took off my socks, by the way. Q, you crazy dog. Oscar De La Hoya. My bad, my bad dog. You smelled it from there? It, it weaved through you. You caught, it caught you right here. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, dog. When, when I threw it down, it stuck to the table, man. Like, it sounds like Velcro would be pulling it off. Anywho. Yeah, Oscar De La Hoya, he fought them all. Chavez, he fought them all. That, like you said, that Chavez, Meldrick Taylor fight, too bad what happened to Meldrick Taylor after that fight. But 
a great loss is better than a boring win. Period. Yeah, Meldrick Taylor was bleeding from his brain, apparently. That the last the last interview I saw with Meldrick Taylor, bruh. Bruh. TK, what's going on with you? Bruh. Bruh. Uh, you know. AQ, this is what I this is what I was talking about. That Nitro being against the G-Man, bro. That's the saddest fight. That's the saddest fight to me. That's the saddest fight to me. Gerald knocked that man through the ropes. That guy was laying outside for 14 seconds, bruh. Got him back in. If he was counted out then, we would have eventually seen Roy Jones versus the G-Man, dog. That fight was coming. That was on its way. I don't know if Taylor was better than Floyd, but he was, he was nice. Word. Man, look, Nigel Ben, Nigel Ben was a rough competitor. He punched, he punched off the wrong foot. He did a lot of things wrong, but he was a rough competitor. With that said, uh, I will always say that fight between Nigel Ben and a G Man out there was poorly ref, and it resulted to the demise. A permanent state that is very sad. Gerald is one of the greatest talents ever. You know what I'm saying? That's very sad. Yeah, TK. Yeah. But I always say, I always say, I always say, I don't see it like that, Lewis. No, man. I, well, we're just gonna be we're just gonna be split here. We're just gonna be split here. Um, you know, Emmanuel Stewart wasn't in Gerald's corner because of that beef. Uh, it was ref poorly. The punches on the back of the to the back of the head. When he was knocked out the ring, uh, the count was at four. The referee said one. It was just bad. It was really bad. That was horrible. And I don't see it as Nigel being off the sweat of his back proving everybody wrong. I just don't see it that way. I just used my two eyes and I looked at it. You know, I just don't see it that way. I don't see it that way, man. But I always say Gerald against Julian the Hawk Jackson it epitomizes what boxing should be, a, be about. Yeah, everybody lost that night. That epitomizes what boxing should be about. Um, also, another fight is Sugar Ray Leonard against Tommy Hearns 1. That is what boxing should be about. Okay? Because Leonard and Tommy Hearns fought when they were prime, prime, prime. Optimus prime. Transform and roll out. <laughs> I mean, yo. This wasn't Jerry Curl Tommy Hearns. This was baby fro, pubic hair fro Tommy Hearns against Leonard. I mean, they were in their prime and Leonard knocked him out. Yeah, TK, that epitomizes it to me. You know, that's why I'm like, Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford should fight soon. That's why I applaud, um... Uh, Tyson Fury against Deontay Wilder without this whole build up into this hype. Dude, her says Sugar Ray Leonard fought twice. You know what I'm saying? You can fight when you're Keith Thurman talking about hey, let the fight build up. Man, fight! Fight the best fighter out there. And then the fight itself will prove itself to be true. You can save the sport by doing that. Forget the Mayweather effect. There was only one Mayweather. 
Only Mayweather can do that. I swear to I swear to you, Ricky. I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I don't know if Meldrick Taylor was better than Floyd. Shoot. I don't know if Meldrick Taylor was better than Terry Norris. Keep it keep keep it one hundred. BK, you're funny. What's up, boxing wish list? You think he's way better? I, I can't. I, I don't. You know, I don't know, dog. I don't know. Yeah, Clark. Lewis, we would not be opposed to that. We would not be. We we would not be against that. We're reaching out all over the world, man. So, Pete. You can easily debate that Meldrick Taylor. Yeah, Q, that would be dope. Yeah, I'm still in the East Coast now. So you can debate that. You can't debate that Meldrick Taylor is better than Floyd, man. You can't debate that, bro. No. You can't. How? It's, it's so much speculation. Parnell Whitaker... Um, can beat anybody in any given night. Anybody ever in anybody in any given night. Yeah, God. Uh, Sweet Pea can beat any fighter ever in any given night. Leonard beats Floyd Mayweather off of out. I mean, Leonard's better than Floyd Mayweather. Leonard. Leonard. Because he's better. Leonard. Leonard, dog. <laughs> but I, I, have a, I have a video when I dis, uh, of me discussing that back in the day. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, man. I'm saying Parnell, Sweet Pea was so masterful. I think any given night, he has the ability to be any of those great fighters ever. Boy, I'm tearing these Tic Tacs up, man. Hey, these people, I may have to get off this live stream and get this together. Because I'm starving. Alright? I may have to get this together because I'm starving. Yeah, and he had great offense though. Yeah, he made he made people he look. It's it's I feel you lame. I feel you. Here, here's the thing. I'm about to eat in a minute, but here's the thing. This is why I say Lomachenko is one of the greatest fighters, best fighters I've seen. He had that Sweet P. Whitaker thing about him. Sweet P. Whitaker was hard to hit, but he was sitting down and letting his hands go in, in bunches. That's the thing about Sweet P. I don't hold that too much against Floyd Mayweather because I'm not a Floyd Mayweather hater. I'm actually a Floyd Mayweather lover. And I know Floyd Mayweather had fragile hands. So Floyd Mayweather, he changed. He adapted. He used to, when he was Money Mayweather, he used to let his hands go. Much love, BK. He used to let his hands go, but he couldn't anymore. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I give him love for adapting and being more of a pop shotter. You know what I'm saying? But... Parnell Whitaker was a great defensive fighter, but he let his hands ride. That's what I like about Parnell. Come on, I'm going 
gonna I'm gonna order a Q. I'm gonna order me. I'm gonna order me a steak with some fries. With with a Coke. With some Coke. <laughs> I'm gonna order me a steak, some fries with some Coke. Fought 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 chicken everything. <laughs> Yeah, it's on Q's bill, dog. Yo, I get at y'all, man. I'm about to go ahead and eat, man. Hey, thanks for showing up. And once again, show up um, Saturday night when I'm or not, it's not, That's not even Saturday night. It's like Saturday afternoon. I'll be live streaming uh, AJ um, against Pavekin. So get at me, man. I'm about to call some food. Show biz the adult. I'm out. Huh.